Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You need to get that head up and get those shoulders back and you need to know that you are the home of God that he's got a good plan for you and no devil in hell can keep you from a great life if you know who you are in him. In him, in him, in him. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. All the beautiful people that have taken Friday night to come and wait on you and let you touch them. And I do pray, God, that you would touch them and not one person would leave here the way they came. Encourage, edify, deliver, heal, set free, and save those that are lost. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you heard a woman testify a little bit ago that although she grew up in church and would not have missed church, that her and her family diligently went to church, that behind the scenes, behind closed doors at home, she was just an absolute mess. Part of it was because she really had lost her God-given identity. I believe that many times what we see going on in the world is something that's actually a manifestation of something that's going on in the spirit only we don't see it in the spirit. Today, identity theft is a huge, huge thing. I saw a movie once about a girl whose identity was stolen, and her life just became an absolute nightmare. This person who'd stolen her identity racked up all these bills, and they were trying to make her pay debts that she didn't know. She was being accused of things that she did not do, very much like the enemy deals with people. He accuses us all the time. He tries to make us think that we constantly need to be paying for something, paying, 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 although the Bible tells us that Jesus has already paid. You need to know who you are, and you need to know who you are in Christ. You need to know where to get your identity. This identity theft thing has become such a problem that now people are buying insurance against identity theft. But the good news is, is that Jesus is our insurance against identity theft. I'm talking about spiritually speaking. So I really want you to open your heart and receive this word tonight because I believe that so many people just don't feel good about who they are. They feel the pressure from the world. They feel peer pressure to be what they think everybody wants them to be. And sometimes we try to be so many people and we try to play so many different roles that we get confused about who we are. I believe we have an epidemic of insecurity in our society. And I think it causes so many problems in relationships because people are not functioning together on an opus, open, honest level. There's a lot of pretense and a lot of works of the flesh, people trying to be what they think that everybody else wants them to be. And the truth is, is God is never going to help you be anybody but you. Did you hear me? God is never going to help you be anybody other than you. And he doesn't want you to be a people pleaser, not that we don't want to please people, but there's a difference in a normal desire to please people and becoming a people pleaser in that you end up letting them manipulate you and control you because you're so intent on keeping them happy that in the process you're making yourself unhappy and very often making God unhappy. You can't really say no to people when you need to say no if you don't know who you are in Christ. So many people go to church and they try to follow all the rules and regulations, but the truth is they just don't like who they are. They feel guilty, they feel condemned, they live under shame and blame and a reproach that they picked up somewhere along the way in the world. And I can tell you when you go to church and you're handed 10 more rules to follow and three new doctrines, it's not going to deliver you from that mess. What you have to know is Christ and the power of his resurrection. And you have to know who you are in him. You have to learn to identify with who you are in him. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether with a brand new nature deep on the inside of him. All things pass away. All things become brand new. 
in Joshua chapter 5, when Joshua is going to go in, lead the people in and take the town of Jericho, first God told them, today the reproach of Egypt is rolled off of you. You cannot possess the land until reproach is rolled off of you. Reproach is shame, blame, and a feeling of being a general failure. When you go through the world a few years, almost everybody has that reproach. But Jesus died to roll that thing off of you so you could live like a new creature. We don't want to just sing songs about it. We want to live it. We want to enjoy it. We want it to be a reality in our lives. Can anybody say amen? amen. Is there anybody here who needs to feel better about who you are? Amen. Anybody that's tired of feeling guilty and condemned and like you got to compare yourself with somebody else and compete with somebody else all the time? Well, I can tell you that I used to have mega problems with that and I am free from it. And there's nothing the devil despises more than a person who knows who they are in Christ. He hates a person who is confident. The devil is afraid of a person who is confident. And you can be confident in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm going to look at quite a few scriptures tonight, but I want you to really pay attention to them. Ephesians 1, verses 3 and 4 to begin with. May blessing, praise, laudation, and eulogy be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ. Everybody say, in Christ. In Christ. Now, you notice it doesn't say he might bless us, he could bless us, perhaps he'll bless us. Who has blessed us in Christ. Christ. You see, we don't really need Jesus to do anything else for us. We just need to believe what he's already done. And we need to believe that it's ours right now, even though it may not be manifested yet in our life. We need to believe that it is ours right now. Spiritually, it's ours. And we will see it if we continue to believe it and agree with God's word. God has a good plan for you. Not just somebody else. God has a good plan for you, and God has a good plan for your children. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to feel good. He wants you to be creative. The Bible says you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. That you can lend and never have to borrow. How's that? But you know what? You've got to believe it. You have to learn how to agree with God. Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, how can two walk together if they're not in agreement? You have to learn how to agree with God and believe what the Word says about you, not how you feel, not what other people have said about you, not what you think, not what the world thinks. We have to learn to exalt the Word of God above all else. So if the Bible says that I'm blessed with every blessing, then I'm going to say I'm blessed with every blessing. Now you're going to see this phrase, in Christ, in Him, in Him, in Christ, mentioned many times tonight. How does one get in Christ? Very simple. The moment that you truly receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, the moment you believe on Him, the moment you believe that He died for your sins, that He paid the debt that you owed, that you're forgiven, that you're washed clean, and that He is making a place for you for all eternity in heaven. The moment that you believe that, the Bible says you are in him. And he is in you. You become the home of God. I wonder how many times we're going to have to hear that before we finally get really excited about it. You are the temple of God, the home of God. He lives in you. And he enables you to do anything that you have to do in this world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? You have been blessed in Christ with every spiritual Holy Spirit given blessing in the heavenly realm. Verse 4. Even as in His love He chose us. Wow. I'm so glad that God didn't just get stuck with me like he didn't have any other options. God came after you on purpose. Amazing. And you know what? He's not surprised by your behavior. God knew all about you, everything you would ever do, every dumb thing you would ever say, every mistake you would make, 
and he saw the good things before you ever even had an opportunity to do them. What did he say to Jeremiah when he was trying to call Jeremiah into service? I formed you in the womb, and before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you and I approved of you as my chosen instrument. So this is all a God thing. God chooses and God uses, and he doesn't do it because we're deserving. He does it because he's loving and he's kind. And somehow or another, in his plan, he feels that he can do something with us and make something out of us. Can anybody get excited about that tonight? I have to laugh when I look at the groups of people that God puts together and uses in ministry. It's really downright hysterical. <laughs> the group Delirious travels with us somewhat, and uh, they were with us in our last conference, and Martin Smith, the lead singer, shared that he failed music. <laughs> the girl's with me that does my hair all the time, and on her report card, her teacher wrote when she was a little kid, Deborah has problems with her scissors. <laughs> I came very, very close to failing English. I couldn't get the whole noun, verb. I didn't care what it was, I just wanted to talk. <laughs> I don't care if it's a noun or a verb or an adverb or an adjective, you know. I don't care if I say it all right, I just want to talk. I think I got a D or something, I did pass, but. So here, we're in Hershey, place is packed. We've got a guy leading worship that failed music and a woman preaching who almost failed English. It is amazing. Can anybody say amazing? <laughs> it is amazing how when the Spirit of God comes upon us, He turns us into a totally different man or woman and uses us for His glory. As I said this morning, one of the biggest things that hinders us, though, is the spirit of pride. When we begin to think that it's us and not God, or that we deserve it, or when God is using us and doing great things through us, we begin to feel lifted up and we begin to look down on other people who can't do what we can do. God picked you out on purpose. He chose you. Even as in his love he chose us, picked us out for himself as his own. What, how? In Christ. <laughs> Say in Christ. in Christ. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him, and blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love. Now see, right there we can get really messed up if we don't understand this. You see, actually the truth of the matter is, is we already are all those things in Christ. In Christ, he sees you as blameless. God doesn't see you in you, he sees you in Christ. That's why when we pray in Jesus' name, the Amplified Bible says that we present to God the Father all that Jesus is. When you go and pray, you're not presenting to God all you are. When I prayed for you tonight, and I thought about it before I got up to pray, I don't want to pray if I don't believe God's going to answer my prayers and hear my prayers. So I said, God, I believe you're going to do things tonight when we pray. When we pray the simple prayer of faith, I believe people are going to be healed, they're going to be delivered, they're going to be set free, and I believe that people are going to have breakthroughs in their finances. And I don't believe that because I think I'm this powerful person that prays these great prayers, but I have confidence in the name of Jesus. That when I present that name, every knee has to bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. This is not about us. It's not about what we can do, have done, could do. It's about being in Christ and knowing what that means. And I think we need a little more revelation about what it means to be in Christ. Everybody say, in Christ. in Christ. So get this, in him he sees you as blameless, above reproach, consecrated, holy. You're a pretty awesome person, you know what? In Christ, you ought to really get excited about yourself. Verse seven. Ephesians 1, 7. In him, 
we have redemption, deliverance, and salvation through his blood. The remission, the forgiveness of our offenses, our shortcomings, and our trespasses. Oh my goodness, you didn't hear me. In him, we have redemption. We've been bought back from the enemy. We belong to God. We are none of the devil's business. When he begins to tell you what you're not, just say, thank you. That just gets me all the more excited about God and the fact that he loves me and accepts me the way I am. Delivered. Salvation through his blood, the remission, the forgiveness of our offenses, our shortcomings, and our trespasses. Not because we deserve it, but in accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor. Verse 11, in him, <laughs> we were made God's heritage and portion, and we obtained an inheritance. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm going to show you scriptures tonight that plainly says that everything Jesus has received from the Father, He has sent the Holy Spirit to work in your life to consistently, step by step, transmit those things to you. Everything that Jesus earned by His death and sacrifice that God gave to Him, you have inherited in Christ. Do not go around anymore talking bad about yourself, saying bad things about yourself, hanging your head down, being full of self-pity, being discouraged and depressed, comparing yourself with everybody else, competing with everybody else. You need to get that head up and get those shoulders back, and you need to know that you are the home of God, that He's got a good plan for you, and no devil in hell can keep you from a great life if you know who you are in Him. Him, in Him, in Him. Now I have to keep stressing the in Him because this ain't got nothing to do with you. When we say that we are the righteousness of God, we always have to add in Christ. I mean, in ourselves, we're a mess. Just like, well, the lady said, you know, here in Tennessee, we just say I was just a big old mess. Well, you know what? We say that everywhere. I mean, I can go to Timbuktu and they'll say that, so... And the truth is, without him, we are nothing. Jesus said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And we have no worth and no value, and no amount of our so-called good works is going to purchase us a place in heaven. We cannot earn, we cannot deserve, we cannot be good enough to meet the requirements of God's holiness. But we can be in Christ, totally depending on him for everything. Everybody say in Christ. in Christ. I believe there's people here tonight that have never had a revelation on this. And I believe there's many people watching by TV that you are so miserable, so unhappy. You have no peace. You have no joy. You think you've tried God, but really you haven't tried God. You've tried some brand of religion and it has failed you. And Jesus did not die so you could have a religion. He died so you could have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. This is all about relationship. Amen. God loves you. And that's the healing balm for your soul. That's what heals every bit of brokenness in your life, is God loves you, and He's never going to stop, and He loves you unconditionally, and you can't deserve it, and you can't do anything to make Him stop loving. Sadly, so many people never receive it, so it doesn't do them any good. Because the truth is, is if you don't believe what you're going to hear tonight, then even though it's true, even though it's bought and paid for, it won't be true for you. It is true, but you don't experience it because you don't believe it. Everything that we get from God comes to us through faith, through believing what the Bible says. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the entire renewal of your mind. Right now, I'm helping to renew your mind. I'm going to be saying the same thing to you in a lot of different ways here in the next, I've got about 40 minutes left to preach, and it's renewing your mind. It's tearing down strongholds that Satan has worked years to put in your mind. The light is coming into the dark places in your mind and the dark places in your soul. And many of you are going to go home and you're going to think about this over and over. In Christ, in Christ, is it possible? 
Is it possible that I can have worth and value? Is it possible that God really loves me and accepts me just the way that I am? Now, when you believe it, it's all over but the shouting. Verse 11 again, in him you were made God's heritage and portion and you obtained an inheritance. For we have been foreordained, chosen and appointed beforehand in accordance with his purpose, who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and the design of his own will. I want to tell you what, God's a whole lot more in charge than what we want to think he is. The Bible says he works out everything according to his will. Verse 13 and 14, in him, everybody say in him. In him you also who have heard the word of truth, the glad tidings of the gospel about your salvation, and have believed in and adhered to and relied on him, now I'm getting excited, were stamped with the seal of the long-promised Holy Spirit. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. You got a stamp on you that I can't see with my eyes and you can't see, but let me tell you, the devil sees it. And what's on you is property of God, hands off. Sealed in the Holy Spirit means preserved. The rot of the world cannot get to us because we are sealed in the Holy Spirit for the final day of redemption. All right, now, it gets even better in verse 14. I love this. And the Spirit of God is the guarantee. Woo! This whole thing comes with a guarantee. It comes with a warranty. It's assured. If something seems to not be working, I can say, wait a minute, devil, I've got a guarantee from the Holy Spirit that he's working this out in my life. Because you know the devil will say, well, you don't act like you're saved. Well, it sure doesn't seem to me that God's going to meet your needs. Look at your finances. Yeah, don't tell me all this healing stuff. You know how you feel. Don't tell me about this favor. Ain't nothing good happening to you. Well, if God loves you so much, then why is your life such a mess? And that's when you need to get out your Bible and say, look, I got a guarantee right here. Ephesians 1, 13, I am sealed in the Holy Spirit. Verse 14, the Holy Spirit has guaranteed my vindication. He has guaranteed my deliverance. And just because I can't see it yet doesn't mean it's not on its way. <laughs> Payday is coming. <laughs> Amen. Where do we get our value, our worth, and our purpose? Not the way the world does. Romans 12, too, is a scripture that we quote a lot in church, but it is so important. Do not be conformed to this world. Don't think like them. Don't act like them. But be transformed, changed entirely by the renewal of your mind. Well, do you know who you are in Christ? Do you have confidence in him? Or do you have a serious case of identity theft? You're letting the enemy steal who you really are and maybe you spend way too much time competing with other people and comparing yourself with them. You know, you don't have to live in fear.